Hey there, everybody, and welcome back. For those of you that are interested in learning about this online tool for clickable prototypes and wireframing called Figma, or you just maybe want to learn some UX basics, stay tuned. That's exactly what we're covering in this video. Now, as a pretty terrible teaser, I'm just going to show you an example clickable prototype where we would replace the Google logo with the name for my YouTube channel. Now, I do want to let all of you know, as just a quick disclaimer, we will be downloading a Chrome extension and a plugin in this video. These are not required for you to use Figma. They do make things a lot easier, but these are created by third parties. So I do want to let you know, I did not create these extensions and plugins, and I recommend that if you decide to download them that you do them at your own risk or download them at your own risk i'm not responsible for anything that happens um, so just make sure that again you're doing whatever you feel most comfortable with so let's go ahead and jump in and start making this together now i do want to let you know that i'm not a ux ui designer myself but i've had to use this tool in the past for creating some basic clickable prototypes and wireframes so let's just go ahead and jump straight in. First thing to do is navigate to figma.com. Go ahead and create your free account. It doesn't require a credit card or anything like that. And then if you're interested, although make sure you do this um, at your own risk, just because um, you know, you're gonna be installing third-party applications here, but they do have a tool called HTML to Figma, which allows you to download the content of a specific web page to make it easier to manipulate in Figma. Now, Let's go ahead and jump in. So when you go into the Figma homepage, you can click on the design file option over here on the right, and it's gonna land you in a dashboard like this. I do wanna note that these are gonna be your different Figma files. So this is kind of like your, we'll just call it your file storage area. You can create your teams over here, upgrade your plan, um, but then you're gonna have all the different files in your account here. Now, what we'll do is I already have that extension installed, so you'll see this little option up here. And what we'll do is we'll walk through the basics first. So in Figma, you have your frame and slice tools here. And one thing that you'll learn to really enjoy is they have keyboard shortcuts, and it's really easy to pick and choose different tools that you're interested in. So let's just say you wanna draw a rectangle, you select the rectangle you will then click and drag. And so for example, I'm clicking now and dragging. Now I don't have the rectangle tool selected again, it defaulted back to the select tool, but when you let go, that's essentially how you would create this rectangle. Now when you select the rectangle, you'll see you have all the design elements here. So your layering, your fill colors, so we could select right here and we can change the color of what we want that rectangle to look like and then we can change stroke, effects, etc. You also have the prototype settings here and the inspect option here as well. Now, another thing that you can do is we have this pen and pencil option here. So that's basically what you'd expect. You can essentially draw things. Now, you do need to pay attention with the pen tool because it does give you the option, as you can see here, it's not necessarily just freehand. You have the ability to manipulate the shape based on basically like angles, like you see what I'm doing here. So right now I'm holding the mouse and kind of moving it around to choose uh, what this actually looks like. And it continues to draw. So for example, I'm not reselecting, I'm just clicking around. And then you can just click done. And as you can see, I drew a terrible line. Then you can also use the pencil tool, which a little bit more simple, it's freehand as you would expect. So I just clicked and dragged and there's the shape that it drew. And then you have your text tool. So we could put some text right here, put hello. And then you have this hand, which actually moves around the canvas. So it looks right now like I'm actually moving the rectangle. But if we were to draw, for example, a separate rectangle over here, you can select it and move it around but you can also click on the hand, and as you'll see now, both of them are moving. So you can imagine this gray background as one giant canvas. Now you do also have the option to click up here to access your different file menus. So for example, one thing I would recommend learning is Control-Z for undo, although this is on Windows. You can check the shortcut for Mac as well. And then you can see all of your different view, object, and vector options over here text, arrange, etc. So as you can see, there are different, you can run the plugin or run last plugin, check the integrations, preferences. 
So there's a lot of options. This is an incredibly powerful tool for something that's web-based. And another cool thing about this is if you share the prototype with someone, which we'll walk through shortly, they can actually see you editing in real time, which is a really cool thing. So we're going to click on, let's see. So we'll click on the move option and we're just going to do one giant select. So you'll see the tidy up menu. You can ignore that. Now this will move things. So for example, if I just want to select these options here, I can move them and you'll see that this stayed behind and I can move this separately. And I also have the ability to scale and resize and uh, change this as I want. So what we'll do now is we'll delete all of this and we'll start with a new canvas. So I just highlighted everything and clicked delete. And now we're going to go to a page like Google and just show you how this works. So if we click on this option up here and click capture current page, you'll see it downloads a JSON file here. And then it shows you what to do over here. So you're going to type in HTML and then you can see how to actually set this up on your machine. So we can go over here and you can see quick actions and just like the video showed us, you can type in HTML. And uh, what we can do as well instead of doing that because that might actually be the wrong menu. So another way to do this is you have a couple of choices when you're actually logged into the account. So they have a couple of different plugins, but we're actually going to be using something a little bit different. So what we're actually going to be doing is we're going. All right. So now that you see this little file down here has finished downloading, we're going to jump over to Figma. And in the top left, if you haven't installed the plugin, we need to do that now. So I have this right here, but we may need to install it if you don't already have it. So we're going to click manage plugins. And then you can go to Browse Plugin Community because you won't have Figma to HTML installed. And then here we're just going to type in HTML to Figma. And then you're essentially going to scroll down, find this Figma to HTML, click Install over here. Again, make sure that that's something you're comfortable with doing. You're kind of up to what goes on to your machine. Um, that's your decision for your own personal safety and all of that fun stuff. So next up, what we're going to do is we're just going to essentially just click on the back button twice and land back in our Figma file, which should be empty for the most part. We're going to click in the top left and we'll click plugins, Figma to HTML. And then you'll get a little window like this. Now you can do it based on URL, but we already have the file. So we're just going to click upload here and then it'll take us to downloads and you're just going to double click that file and you'll see now we have essentially Google's page right here. So you can begin making edits and it brings over most of the components. So you'll see all of the different components on the page on this tree on the left. You can put your mouse over each of the options to see the individual elements get highlighted. For example, if we decided, you know what, we don't want this, we'll just click delete and so on and so forth. Now, it doesn't always bring every individual element over. Sometimes some things can get lost, but most of the time you can just add those in. So let's just say we want to delete this and make this our own. So we could go to rectangle. You can try to design and create your own logo because when you, again, you'll see how everything kind of lines up. So we could drop in our own logo here, call it whatever we want. Now I have minimal design sense myself. So I'm just going to put Tyler talks and then we'll highlight everything and we can make this a lot bigger and we're not really trying to impress anyone right now, obviously. So we'll just throw that in there. And then this would be our sample prototype. Now it's not clickable because we haven't really assigned actions or what needs to be done next. So what I would typically do is use the hand and we can kind of move this over and figure out how do we want this canvas to be laid out? We have tons of space and it expands essentially as you need it to. So what you could do is you can go get the select tool and we'll just highlight everything here. You can hit control C or command C and then control V. And you'll see now we have this pasted in directly next door. Now, most of the time your content is going to be within a frame and typically from what I've seen, the frame is 
what's going to be displayed when you click on that, uh, for example, on one element. So the frame is where everything's kind of contained, and that's what's going to be shown. So here's an example. If we want, let's make this something that's clickable. If you click on this button, I want it to take us to this page, but what I want to be different is I'm going to delete the search bar, and then we'll delete this. And just for simplicity's sake, let's bring over a rectangle right here. And again, obviously this is zero design sense, but we would basically put, if we were doing like a sample search, we would put search results. And then we can highlight all of that, change the text size, and then you could put, for example, if you want to select that again, you'll select the text. And then you can select the rectangle as well. Um, but basically, we could change search results if you really want to add in more. We could just put one, two, three, four, etc. And then maybe we want to delete this element and this element. Maybe we decide, you know what, I actually need to move this up a little higher. So you can highlight these two, and then you can choose the move, and that actually moves the page. So what we need to do is basically just drag them. So we'll scoot that up a little bit. Now we decided, okay, when you click on the only button on the page, we'll delete a button, put this dead center. It doesn't really have any text, or if it does, it's, um, it's probably black, so you can't really see it. But if we want to have this button connect us to this page, what we would do is select this button, go to prototype, and you'll see this little circular node appear. So you can grab this and say, okay, we want to take us to this page. You'll see that it connects, and then you can choose on click, drag while hovering, etc. But we'll just keep on click, navigate to, and then you'll choose the frame. And then you can essentially just click close. Now, when you move back to design, that line will disappear, but you can click prototype again and grab this and move it around. And the idea here is if you decided you wanted a different button that takes you to a different page, then you could highlight all of this again and essentially copy it and then create a different instance of this page and say button two, do everything we just did, takes you to a different page. So an example of what this would look like, so essentially what we're just going to do is hit escape real fast, and we'll just click play. This is going to bring up your shareable link, which is basically the live view. Now the cool thing is, as you're making changes, so I'll show you what I mean here, but this is page one. So you'll see we have the name right here. If I grab this and move it over, it happens right in front of you. So you can actually pull up this link on a shared screen and make your edits and changes, and then they'll be reflected on that screen if you're presenting. So this is what the prototype is going to look like. If we go full screen, if you click the screen, you'll see this is what's highlighted. So we can just click here, and this takes us to page two. So that's our very bad example of a clickable prototype, where essentially what we're doing is we're logged in viewing this information and we're able to see, okay, this is what happens when you click this. And if you wanted a rectangle to go to a different page, you can do that as well. Now, one cool thing about Figma is it copies properties uh, or the prototype option with the button. So what I mean by that is if you hit control C, control V, it pastes in the rectangle on top of the current one. And you'll see it carries over this property with it. So you could adjust this to another page. So the idea here is if you need to copy content, so you build out this page here and let's just say you have 10 different links. You decide I want this to take us to the carbon neutral page. You connect it to that page and then you want this button to take you to a different page. So you connect that and you start developing this really complex prototype. But then you decide I want to copy over this content. If you highlight this entire page and then you hit Control C, Control V, you'll see that it'll actually allow you to zoom out and you'll be able to move this and you'll see, oh, the page is actually right underneath. But it'll copy over all of the page's contents 
and those prototypes, so you can actually move those as well. Now, one thing to notice is if you do what I just did and you did not select the frame, you may notice that things look a little different. So if I change this and move this over here, there's no background. So it could be possible that you didn't grab the frame when you selected. So you can typically highlight again, repeat the process, and just see if the frame came over with it. Uh, but it's not too difficult to create a new frame and put things within it. And then again, if you're interested, you can just highlight everything here, click delete, and you can usually hit control plus uh, or control minus to zoom in and out and kind of see all of that content. So this is pretty much going to be the basics of how to drag and import those files and kind of manipulate those pages. And then again, when you click on play, this prototype screen has a share option. So you can send this over to really anyone that you're interested in showing this prototype and kind of edit in real time. Now, if you have any questions, as again, this is a very basic overview, drop them in the comment box below. I'll see what I can do to help out. And then I will see you all in the next video.